My name is Jane, though you may know me as Megacycles, and I'm here to talk to you about inflation versus deflation in the stock market in the context of the current energy crisis. So, since this current market meltdown started, we heard a lot of pundits say that shorting the market or betting against the market is like betting against the printing powers of the federal government, the Fed, essentially. It's like, oh my god, no, I don't want to bet against the endless printing powers of the federal government. But wait, there is a flaw with that argument. And the flaw is that being able to print up as much money as you could possibly want is not the same as being able to get that money out to people and have the people spend it and invest it into the economy. So let's examine this a little bit further. What are ways that we can get that money into the people's hands and make them, you know, spend it or invest it into the economy? Well, hmm, there's this one way I recall that I think loosens the bank's lending standards and then people can get loans much more easily. Oh wait, we already tried that. We tried that after the bust in 2002 when the tech boom exploded. But <laughs> it didn't work. As a matter of fact, so many banks are on the verge of going bankrupt or already went bankrupt that right now banks don't want to lend at all. And what's even worse is that borrowers don't want to borrow at all because uh, I don't want to go bankrupt myself. I don't want to, you know, invest all this money in overpriced assets. So the government realized that. And now the government has to think of another way to print out that money to get it into the hands of the people so they can invest it into the economy. Well, there's the very complicated way of directly giving it to the people. <laughs> we already tried that, though. It's called the stimulus checks. See, those are checks that were mailed to mostly the poorer people that we were supposed to spend buying all kinds of things and going out on a shopping spree. But somehow, for reasons I cannot understand, people went ahead and used them to cover their credit card debt mostly and it not it did not stimulate the economy at all so ugh. well the government's kind of you know in, in a pickle here what are they gonna do now but wait they still have something left and try they still have an option so this is the option you can <laughs> invest into the stock market buy up shares. And I know a lot of you would be completely outraged and go, no, are you kidding? This is a free market. The government would never do that. Well, here's a couple quotes of the articles that came out this past month, right? The first one says, the Fed is still pouring cash into the coffers of the primary dealers, and they're using some of it to buy stocks, hooking a new round of suckers in the process. So we <laughs> need to be vigilant and be ready to jump off the train at the first sign that it is about to go back into reverse. And then, there is also a statement by the New York Times. In a significant shift, White House and Treasury Department officials now say they can stretch what is left of the $700 billion financial bailout fund farther than they had expected a few months ago, simply by converting the existing loans to the nation's 19 biggest banks into common stock converting them into common stock, buying common stock. <laughs> See, the government seems to be using part of the up to $700 billion rotating fund to directly purchase shares of banks in the stock market. And it, it, it was actually successful. I mean, granted, when this rally started, the market was oversold and there were fundamental reasons for this rally. But this is a big part of what fueled it. You can see large amounts of volume coming in at the end of the day and continuously for the past month shifting the balance from the bears in favor of the bulls and allowing this rally to continue while banks are shoring up on capital. Now, the real question is this, right? Can this attempt by the government lead to recovery in the economy? Can it actually generate inflation that will lead to the recreation of wealth for the people? Well, let's examine this a little bit further. So, the official government version says, Confidence returns to the markets, real investors return as a result of this rally, bringing with them money that's been sitting on the sidelines. The government makes a profit off of their investment and lets the free market be. Now, 
there are several reasons this is not going to happen. And to name a few, well, hmm, there's no money on the sidelines. I mean, seriously, think about it. For every single buyer of a stock, there is every single seller of a stock. One person buys one stock, one person sells one stock. And if somebody buys a stock at a cheaper price, the other person sells it at a loss. Therefore, money is essentially being sucked out of the system. This is completely deflationary. The second reason is that the baby boomers are retiring. And many of you probably know that the baby boomer generation, as a matter of fact, in size, is bigger than the generation following them. Which means that there are more of them, which means that as they want to cash out of their assets, supply will exceed demand. And uh, unless the Fed is going to be there to constantly buy up these stocks as the baby boomers are cashing out, well, prices are going to decrease and there is going to be deflation in the stock markets. Thirdly, their fundamentals of the economy have absolutely not improved. I mean, are you kidding me? Green shoots are brown shoots that the media is painting green. I mean, look, the unemployment figure, it is still rising, yes, at a, at a lower rate, but it's still rising. The moratorium on foreclosures have been lifted. Commercial real estate is doing poorly. Alte mortgages are just now beginning to come online as people are beginning to default on them, and the default rates on those are, well, they're projected to be staggering. Also, all of these jobs are disappearing from the marketplace and the few jobs that are being created in their stead, well, quite frankly, a lot of them do not have a future. These sectors have failed already and they will fail again. So, essentially what is happening is that the stock market is priced in a recovery, but the recovery never took place. Well, what happens when investors realize that? This leads us to the second option, see? The government turns its temporary infusions into permanent ones. And the money stays invested, shifting the balance between demand and supply in favor of demand, and thereby lifting prices. Now, before we cheer this option, we have to understand that ownership of stocks actually represents ownership of assets. It represents ownership of stakes in a company. So let's say before, and this is oversimplifying, I know, but let's say that before this crisis started, well, the people owned 100% of the shares in the stock market. As this crisis progressed, people started sh selling their shares at a ridiculously reduced price, and now the government owns 50% of the shares in the stock market, and the people own only the other 50. This is oversimplifying. Again, don't get all uptight about my numbers being wrong. So, the government, with these 50%, manages to drive up the stock prices. So, the stock prices that were worth $100 as a total for the stock market, before the meltdown, then they fell down to $50, and now they're $100 again. What? The people only own 50% of the market, so the people only have $50. Those are the $50 that people are supposed to cash in and then go ahead on, you know, spending sprees, lifting the economy. Well, excuse me, but how in the world are people supposed to do that when they now only have half the wealth they used to from the stock market? The answer is it's simply not going to happen. So, <laughs> there's still, a, you know, there's still the possibility, and we have to consider it as much as we don't think that is likely that the government is going to be so wildly successful in this idea of propping up the stock market that right now the market as a whole instead of being worth a hundred dollars like it once was it's worth three hundred dollars so uh, people still own fifty percent of it but still that's a hundred and fifty dollars for the people it's a lot more than they used to have and this would be equivalent essentially to sending most baby boomers and I focus on them because they really are the dominant investors here. Most 20, 30-year-old Joes, they don't own that many shares of stock. 